Hey everybody, it's Rob from Man Sewing and I'm going to totally take you into technology today, but we're gonna still use textiles too. Wow. I'm glad I went through speech class when I was a kid. I used to say all my T's as S's or something like that. Anyways, this is what we're making today and I'm super excited about this. This is a cool little travel tote that your cell phone can go in and sometimes it's not real convenient in like a hotel room or even in your own bedroom to have this close to your charger. So look at this, you take your charger, you slide it through a grommet like this. I've got a little pocket on the back for your cord. And so at any rate, that will hang there for you and you can charge your phone overnight, keep it all tidy and convenient. And if you needed some extra protection or pad while you're traveling. So this is going to be a really, really cool project. And there's a couple different options for you here on this, but it's really just super fun. So let me get you started. Supplies wise, and I've already blown through a lot of this with my rotary cutter, but I started with one of the little five inch square packs from Island Batik, a fabulous uh, set of greens. I think it had about 16 colors in it. I've got some batting scraps and let me just tell you the sizes right now on our batting scraps. Um, I've got a five inch by 10 and a half inch. I've got a five inch by seven and a half inch and I've got a five inch by four and a half inch and those are the good sizes not the scrap sizes so you're taking your scraps and making those three pieces please we're also going to use uh, our cool plastic grommets and there's a quick tip out there for you if you need a little extra information on the grommet I'm going to put this in at the end very quickly for you so let's go ahead and get started. And what I was saying is I took this cool island batik fabric right and I cut my five inch five inch squares right down into one and a half inch pieces. But stop, don't get your whole pile out yet. You really only need one of each of the 16 fabrics out of your set. And when you're done cutting these down into your one and a half inch strips, you should end up with about 48 if I've done my math correct, and you only need about 42. We're gonna organize these here in a minute, and we're gonna make three different size panel pieces for our bag. So. The bag is, like I said, divided into three pieces. You've got your front cover, protects your phone, the middle panel, and then the back little pocket, okay? So this is an example of what that um, little uh, back portion is gonna look like, and this is a sample of what the front little pocket's gonna look like, okay, when we're done. So we're gonna build this fabric first. And to build the fabric, what I really did is I took all of my scrap pieces like I've got, and I kind of wadded them up, right? And what you want to do is you're going to build um, technically six piles of working sizes and I'm going to use piles of 10. So I need two piles of 10. I'm going to have piles of seven. So I'll need two piles of seven. And then I'm also going to use piles of five. And with that, I'm going through here and I'm kind of enjoying the way the colors are um, playing together. And you notice I just pulled this one out of the mix because I don't want the same fabrics to touch each other. So there's two, four, six, eight. Here's two more down here for 10. Okay, so you want to build two like that. We're going to build two with seven in there. Three, four, five. Like that. Okay, oh, got the same fabric. Let's do it that way. And of course you could build a pile with five. And if I've got to count that out for you, you probably have already tuned me out, but there's the five pile. Okay, like that, fun and easy. And I said five and I apologize. It's actually, um, in my notes, it's four. So you need a 10 of seven and a four. I thought that looked kind of funny. Let's get this stuff out of the way. Now, what we're gonna do here is we are going to sew them together in those groups, the tens, the sevens, and the fours, not the fives, right? And so let me see here, I had a piece and I think I just threw it on the floor, so this one ought to be just fine. And I'm going to, with my quarter inch seam allowance, piece these together. Okay, no real need to backstitch, we're gonna be sewing over this here in a moment. And there's something I want to point out to you when it comes to batiks. Now, most of us love batiks because we kind of feel like they're unidirectional or they're, you can use either side. Well, they're doing some cool technology nowadays to get some really crisp, great printing with the batiks. Okay, so like to get these really cool like snake scaly lines in this batik here, they've actually done the last layer as a screen print, like they do standard fabrics. So it's been dyed, but then they have the last layer with a lot of that intensity put on. So this is the top side. 
and if you fold it underneath, you can see there's a pretty solid difference in the value of the fabric. So just be careful when you're working with batiks nowadays, sometimes to get the really cool intricate designs, they do a little screen printing at the end. And I just wanna make sure you don't actually end up with kind of a wrong side showing kind of thing. That's the point I'm trying to make there. Okay, now, one of the other things I've learned to do is while I'm pressing these out, I actually hold the piece of fabric up in the air and then I'm going to let my iron hit this and then I push across the seam and then I push across the seam and on and on it goes and sometimes I'll kind of lift up on the fabric. Let me see if I can show you that left-handed so you can see it a little bit better. So I'm kind of holding up the fabric and then I lift and drop, lift and drop. And what that does is it helps set those seams really nice and all heading in the same direction. Okay, now, like I showed you a moment ago, and I told you this is a pretty fast demonstration for you today. I've made the seven inchers and I've made, um, or I should say the seven strips and the four strips already. The batting's inside, they're top stitch, those pieces are done. So you're gonna do all three of these layers the same. I'm just gonna show you on our big 10 inch because I also wanna show you how to make the curve right here, okay? So what we need to do is we're gonna go fabric, print or correct side to correct side. So the fabrics are together, right sides together. And then I want you to take your big piece of batting. We can lay it right on there. And then of course you're gonna need some sort of fantastic circular creating tool. For example, my roll of blue tape. And I'm gonna lay it so the arc's basically at the top kind of roughly center that. I like to make these kinds of cuts with a small rotary cutter so I can come in and I'm kind of coming about halfway down the tape and cutting. Uh-oh. Looks like I've got a little, little bit of a dull spot in my blade. So I can, now that I've actually kind of cut through that, I can see what I'm doing, cut it a little bit better. And you know, an old pair of scissors wouldn't be a terrible way to do this either, right? We're just kind of rounding that edge I don't love the way that looks. Somehow it's always smoother when you're not watching me at home, right? So let me just make that beautiful for you. There we go. Now I'm happy with it. Get some of this gear out of my way. Now from here, what I'm gonna do, like with all of our sewing and our, and our top stitching, or, or excuse me, I will top stitch, with all of our sewing, I'm gonna start just right in here on this little corner and I'm going to come all the way around with that quarter inch seam allowance again. And I like when I'm doing this to have my batting on the top. I like having my feed dogs against the, the print. Needle down on the corners. And away we go. And I'm going to stop and do a little back stitching to help lock that in place. And then once that's happened, all I need to do now is put my fingers up in here and start to turn it right sides out. And I'm also picking at the fabric here and kind of rolling my fingers on the inside. All right. Oh, we missed a little on this outer edge, but I can catch that with the top stitching too. So it's not going to be an issue. But I am going to press it to secure. That's the disadvantage of sewing with that batting on the top, is it's a little bit harder to see your fabric. And if you don't quite get your fabric lined up, it's not going to quite happen for you. And then I also like to use my corner of my purple thing here to get that nice out there. I'm gonna tuck my bottom under. On this side as well. I'm gonna give this one more press with the iron. Like that, easy, easy, right? And now I like to always top stitch the area that I was working in where the opening is so that I capture it quickly. And here we go. A lot of times top stitching is done a little closer to the edge of the fabric than the quarter inch seam allowance. OK. 
Okay, I'm gonna make my pivot. And I'm looking for that spot. I knew I had a little bit of trouble. Not a big deal. We're also gonna be stitching the other pockets up in on top of this. And so with that other pocket coming in on top of this, it'll also fix that little boo-boo I made. Oh. So this is kind of set up. Mine was a, kind of the same size as the iPhones that are out right now, not the giant phones that are out. This is not a 12 inch bag or something, but you could certainly make this in a much larger size if you wanted to, even for like your iPad or some sort of other small tablet. Okay, got some small scissors here. Trim this up. Okay, now, so once I've got my like top stitching done for this, the rest of it gets pretty darn easy. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, because I had that boo-boo, I'm going to pick the side that I think is the most attractive, and that's gonna become the outside. And check this out. I'm gonna take this, and I'm not gonna lay it on to match the strips. I'm gonna actually lay it on just like this so that I can actually alternate the strips, and it brings it in a little bit closer. And there's a major trick behind that. I don't want all that extra girth out in the, uh, the edges when I sew on the other panel. So now for this, I'm gonna start at the top, Oh, excuse me, I'm going to scoot this up about a half of an inch, too. Same reason at the bottom. So I'm going to start here at the top. And I'm going to actually double back stitch this time. Back, forward again, and back. Whenever you're doing pockets like this, that you're going to be putting your hand in and out often, the more security you provide there, the less chance you'll have to restitch it later. Now I'm just kind of trying to follow that top stitch line. And you put your small one on first, or you'd be stitching through the big one on the front. I'm gonna rotate that pivot there. And as I get ready to approach, I'm gonna do the same side on this. Back stitch once, back stitch twice. And I actually come out past that pocket a little ways there. Okay, and I'm trimming these threads now because I'm going to be installing the other side. Once that's done, now I'm taking this and I'm looking for my favorite side with my favorite fabrics showing or how I like it. And now this is gonna lock right in on the top, but I actually don't sew down the first row either so that I have a little bit of a better ability to get my fingers in there as well as I just kind of like that look. So I'm starting on the second strip down right at that seam allowance and I'm going to now come in on that same top stitching and I'm back stitching again and back stitching again for the same reasons and now I'm going to go hustling around here once this part's done all we have to do is install the grommet and the little closure I used at the end I wanted something to kind of secure it I stole my little girl's hair tie and that's all that is is one of those fancy little hair rubber bands I don't know if you caught me, I gave it a little extra encouragement around that corner. Sometimes you need that with all that bulk in there. And again here, a little encouragement to push through. And don't forget to stop at the seam allowance here between the first and second piece of fabric. Back stitch once, back stitch twice just like that. And we have that constructed. So you've got your front pocket, your back pocket, some trimming to do. And now are you ready to see how the grommet goes in? Okay, so if you saw the quick tip, you'll remember, but if not, I'm gonna show you again. There is a template that comes with your grommet. So first we're gonna wanna mark where this goes. And I'm now really trying to center it within my little decorative bag here. And I'm gonna take my chalk pencil and I'm gonna cut out these chalk lines and these chalk lines are gonna be where the grommet fits through. So I'm gonna cut just to the inside. If you leave your opening too large, they might come out later. And now I threw that little rotary cutter on the floor. I had something stuck in it, I think is what my problem was. I'm gonna try this again. If nothing else, it'll get us started. If it doesn't work, I'm gonna get my regular scissors out. A Little more of a sawing motion here, but it's still working nicely almost have it for you and here we go
Okay, there's my hole that's been made. And now when you've got your grommets, you have two different pieces. Basically, you have a part that has an extra lip in here like this. That I like to put from the bottom side under so that that lip comes all the way through. And then the other piece is just completely flat, but you will notice there's the release mechanism that you could put a screwdriver in there and pop it loose. So I don't want you to be able to see that. So I'm going to hide this down in there, get it all lined up and put a little pressure on. Once I've got it snapped in, I put my palm of my hand on there and look at that. Is that not the most terrific little cell phone bag? Okay, now that you've got the basic steps down with this one being finished, I wanna show you and tell you a few of the other options I had done. So when I was first playing with this, it was kind of feeling a little bit bulky. So I actually free motion machine quilted each individual layer before I assembled them. Of course, you couldn't quilt them and then uh, when they're already assembled because you would stitch it through and you couldn't slide your phone in. So hopefully that makes sense for you. And then I thought, you know what? I bet you there's somebody out there that patchwork is just not their cup of tea as well. So check this one out. This is a really nice and smooth version here where I've gone ahead and the math is all the same, but I just use single layers of fabric and this one is obviously not quilted but it still has the batting in each and every layer as well so that's another nice option and then you've got your different color grommets you could put in there's a huge variety of colors of grommets to decorate it up with and then there's that little hair tie that i stole out of my daughter's uh, hair and ribbons drawer when she wasn't looking and the object behind that was that i can now cover this around the back and kind of lock that in and that now keeps my cord and my charger and everything nice and secure so here's what I want to know. I want to hear what your very favorite piece of technology of all times is, even if it's the toaster or the bread slicer or whatever. I want to know what you love out there. Drop it in our comments below. We read each and every one of them at least three times. And while I'm making good stuff at home, you're making good stuff at home. We'll see you next time at Man Sewing.